what's going on people welcome to the player rating show oh my days i'm actually excited about this one i am actually excited about this one i'm joined by patrick here um there's a few players to talk about in detail that i really want to delve into but as always we want to hear from you so make sure to let us know your thoughts and your ratings in the comment section down below if you do enjoy it smash the like button and subscribe of course patrick we look at the systems, the tactics, and all of that, but it all comes down to the 11 players on the pitch. And let's start off with the one of the main talking points, if not the main talking points, Dean Henderson in goal. After Sam Johnson was out with an injury for the rest of the season. Let's start with this wow. one. You gave him a 7.5, wow. I gave him a 4.5. That's and a half. disgraceful. That's disgraceful. Dude. Why is that disgraceful? 4.5, um, wow. You didn't have five goals yesterday. No. Is that how you do oh, your okay. race? With the goalie? You know what? No, no, you no. Know, you, know, you, go five goals. you go first. Well, I, I, you go I do first. feel like um, he was at fault for the goal as well. Maybe he could have done a bit better, even if he was not directly at fault. He could have done a bit better. I just didn't like how he wasn't convinced since coming out in a six-yard box in that instance. And as look, we said in a, in, in a match reaction show, I think overall his game was good. Um, he made uh, some good saves. He's also, you know, in corners, he came out, he punched the ball away. But as a goalie, when you have that one moment, when it kind of goes against you, you have to put that into, you have to put that into consideration. It's not like a misplaced pass. It can lead to a goal. And I feel like he could have done better with the goal that we conceded. He just didn't seem convincing. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> oh, okay. But you can explain. You can explain why. I, 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 seven and a half. I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to remember any player has got a four and a half ever before. I'm not even joking. I can't remember ever, ever giving anyone. On, Patrick, we've done we've done ones. I'm pretty sure before. So give me one. So, so name name somebody. Dude, name somebody. I can't remember. But I remember doing the. I remember, I remember writing down the number when I was doing the graphics. Like I, we've done way worse than four and a half. Like so you gave him a four and a half and he gave up five goals against Arsenal. I'm assuming, right? I mean, I'm gonna go back and look. No, no, oh, we didn't do ratings we, back we, then. We didn't do ratings back then. We're giving worse. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. Let me. All right. So let me let me back up my seven and a half. All right. So. Yes, the question on a goal. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dispute that anymore. Listen, I, I watched Peter Schmeichel yesterday do a um a post match. He said if he was a keeper, he'd be disappointed in that goal. So I respect Peter Schmeichel, one of yeah. the best keepers of all time, no problem. But our manager said that he thought Henderson played well. The manager said that. All right. Also, he had four saves. All right. Fifty first minute against um Hudson Odoi made a very good save when he cut it from the left for the shot. Twenty third minute against um Gio Reyna made another good save uh, on him. And I thought he was very, very good on coming for crosses. There were plenty of times when there were like four or five players around him in the past. He's mispunched. He's missed the punch. He's he's he's, he's not done well. Did really well on that. He gave up one goal. And I'm going to say it again. I thought that goal was a good goal. Now, I'm not saying he could not have saved it. But I that was a very well, well, well placed chip by um, Morgan Gibb White. It was a very good header by Chris Wood. And another day, that ball goes over the bar. You know what I mean? It goes right into his hand. So it was a perfect, perfect header. To give him a 4.5, <laughs> you know what? That's fine for you. I give him a 7.5. I thought, again, I thought he played well besides the goal. So, uh, again, it is what it is. Let's move. <laughs> I wonder what I was given. I wonder what I was given. Let me know. Let me know I would love to see, yeah. In the conversation, yeah. Um, your rating for Dean Henderson yesterday. Because he, he did make a few um, good saves. So, I don't know. Maybe... It's, 4.5, 7.5, higher, lower, let us know. Let's move on to Munoz, which I think we can both agree that he had a very good game. We both gave him an 8. He was running like all over the pitch, as he normally does. Very good um, in terms of the ground was 1. Um, he won uh, 6 out of 8. Uh, aerial draws 2 out of 4. And yeah, overall, he was he was fantastic um, trying to keep Hodgson Odo quiet. Yeah, I thought they did a good job... Um... Forest on focusing on our right side. They focused on um either Munoz or Ward by having either Aina or Hudson Doy, you know, uh overlap or whatever on that side. So I thought that Munoz had a really good game. Like you just said, he gave out the stats. He's all over the place with his pressing, almost got a you know, I looked at it again. He wasn't actually his header. That was a header by Nico Williams, the one that hit the post, but he was mm. involved in it on that on that corner kick. But overall, again, very crucial to how he play. he played really well yesterday. I mean, just a solid game by Munoz. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the centre backs, Joe Ward. You gave him a seven. I gave him a six. Um, and the reason why I'm giving him a six is because I don't know, Patrick. I don't. 
I don't think he had a bad game, but I don't think he had a good enough game in comparison to the other center ups as well. I don't know. Maybe Anderson and Richards was a bit more involved when I'm just looking thinking about the eye test. And also with Wardy, yeah. the one thing that annoyed me was his distribution. The stats don't don't really prove it. He was 74%, you know, last night, which exactly, isn't too yeah. bad. But then again, right. with the long balls, it kind of does because three out of ten uh were accurate. And I feel like his distribution sometimes from the back, especially putting the ball forward, it just wasn't good enough. But that's what I expect from Joe Wood. Uh, defensively, again, they targeted him and I thought he did a good job. I mean, listen, Ola Aina is a very good, very good fullback. You know, Rich mentioned yesterday in, in the post-match show about he, he was upset that he was back in lineup. He's, he's a very good player. Hustle Adoy, we wanted him. He's a quality player. Uh, again, they, they were smart. They targeted that side. They figured they would rather go that side with Hustle Adoy and Aina than go on the other side with um, Origi, who's not, a, who's not really a wide player, and um, Nico Williams. And they you can see that. Uh, 58 touches for Ward. You, you mentioned 74% uh, passing, nine recoveries, four clearances, and D, on the goal. He was pressing for the goal. He makes the interception, gives the ball to Lerma, gives the ball to Eze, to, uh, to Mateta. Without the pressing, we don't score that goal. So for me, Ward had a very solid game yesterday. Mm. Look, um, look, I'm not saying he didn't, but yeah. Um, no, no. I just feel like... Yeah, I just feel like Anderson, uh, which you clearly rated a lot. Eight and a half exactly, me, I did. And a half me, um, <laughs> yeah. Had a better game. I and mean, why was it though, Patrick? Why Anderson eight and a half and Ward seven for you? For me, I, I have my reasons. I think the main thing is um, he was he had 10 clearances. He was very, very good in the air, a lot, a lot of those crosses. And again, uh, because of the way they played and they were focused on playing wide to Origi and Hudson Adoy, Wood was the Wood was the main um, attacking force, and I think that Richards and um, Anderson did a good job. The only time you really saw Wood was that one header. It was a, again that's why I'm giving him credit for the goal. But he they they did a great job of Wood the the entire match. So I thought uh, of the two, and I gave we we'll get to Richards soon. I gave him a good rating too. I thought Anderson was very very solid. You know we've talked about him a lot this season without Gehi, with Gehi, etc., and how defensively sometimes he he can fall asleep. But yesterday I thought it was very very good. I just thought it was very good yesterday. Yeah, the, the thing with Anderson, I'm not going to get carried away because um, yeah, yeah, I get, it. A, I get it. He's had a funny season. Like he's had <laughs> yeah a few games where he's been good like this, and then games where he does things which you wouldn't expect from a player with Joachim Anderson's experience. Uh, but yeah, yesterday it was much better. He looked uh, convincing. He wasn't silly at times with his decision making in terms of you know keeping the ball for a bit longer than he should. And and yeah, like there there were no there were no problems. And as you mentioned, Richards. For me, seven and a half as well. Um, I feel like there wasn't much of a difference between both of the games. You gave uh, Richards a 0.5 lower than Joachim Anderson. But for me, look, Richards, 79% passing accuracy, uh, seven out of eight aerial duels won. He was very yeah, good in the air. Massive. And when you're facing Chris Wood, that's important as well. I think Lasna said it, uh, two out of three ground duels won. And just overall, Richards uh, on the eye test, both Richards and Anderson, um, you know, even when Forrest did have the ball, I know we considered a goal. Um, they were both solid enough to try to keep them quiet, and they didn't. They didn't really create that many big chances in the game. No, I agree. I think, like I said, I've mentioned it in one of our shows, but I just think that um, when he plays for the U.S. national team, he shares a lot more confidence. I'm starting to see a little bit more with Palace because he's playing um, in his natural position, which is a centre half, not as a defensive midfielder or a right back. So I just think the more you see Richards play, the better he's going to get. And I think. It's, if if it ever happens, and it probably won't, but if we see Addison, Gehi, and Richards as a, as a back three, we're gonna see one of the, we're gonna see a very solid uh, back line. Yeah, there were some people, not some. I think I saw one comment, one What's comment that? suggesting what happens when Gay's back. I was like, um, it's pretty yeah. simple. Like he's not rocking a Joe Wood drops yeah. and Gay comes in, but <laughs> yeah, it, it, that maybe goes credit to Joe Wood. Um, Yes, you know, great point. Of, yeah, exactly. He how, he hasn't, he, yeah, he hasn't been like a bad defensively um, as a centre-half. And I, look, centre-half is going to be his position going forward. There's no way he can play as a right-back. He just hasn't uh, yeah. just over the legs and it'll be easy to mark out. Let's talk about Mitchell. We both agree on our ratings with a seven. Um, there's still a few people talking about his attacking input, saying he's not good enough going forward. I don't know if I just uh, if I agree with that based on yesterday's game. But for you, I thought I thought, Rich, I thought Mitchell had a solid game. I don't, I don't think it was that bad. And maybe what was it? Um, 
there, there was a stat that it's not all about stats, but I think there was a stat that I saw um, that I'll try to find. Uh, possession loss, yeah, 15 times. Maybe it was that. They lost possession quite a few times, but that's normal, I guess, in a game. In comparison, you know, other players have lost possession as well. But what did you make of Mitchell? I thought he was solid. I mean, 79% yeah. passing. I thought it was very good versus Origi. Like I just said, I mean, they didn't focus on that side. They really chose to attack on the other side because they they know they figured it was easier to go down that side than Mitchell's side. I thought he got, thought he got forward fine. Um, I didn't put a lot of crosses in, but he was he was he was trying to link up a lot with Eze on that side. Um, again, you're comparing. I think what's happening now, people start to pay him to Munoz, which is very unfair. It's like a so four or five year. Time, by the way, fifteen. Ex exactly. But you're talking about a, a, a Colombian international who's going to be going to the World Cup, uh, most likely with um, Colombia, who's having a he's having a, a, a massive impact on our team. And I think the more that um, Mitchell gets to play with a player like Munoz, sees how he plays, the better he's going to get. But I thought yesterday he was very solid. You can't blame him for anything that he did wrong yesterday, honestly. And I, and I expect them to improve as, as time goes on on the Glasgow system. I do think yeah. he's got the ability to play in the system, 100%. But remember, it's early days. There's, there's still like a few comments suggesting what's, what's different from Roy to this. Like, I mean, come on. No, football, we're not doing that. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> you can't expect changes that quickly. Like, it's not as straightforward as that. Like, I know sometimes you have the new manager impact and all of a sudden you get results left, right, centre, but you want it to be sustainable. You just don't want it to be a, a short-term impact and in the long term, it just goes downhill. And with Glasner, I think we're building something. I think we saw it yesterday as well. And one of those players that will benefit is, is Ty, 100%. Um, yeah, and I don't think he had a bad game yesterday. Let's move on to the midfield. Adam Walton, I, asked, oh, I love this guy. I actually love him. He's going to be a phenomenal uh, He's going to be a phenomenal baller. Like he is. He already is, maybe. Eight from me, seven and a half from you. Um, that that pass to Eze, as soon as I mentioned him, that pass to Eze just popped up in my head where Eze should have yeah. scored. Like Eze. Um, but it, ooh, even when you know Forrest had the ball, they were trying to counter us. He's there to try and stop the counter attack, composing possession. There's nothing bad I can say about him. The only problem is, once again, he didn't play the full 90 minutes. Yeah, that's not on him, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, 81% passing, created two chances. The 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 the, the, the short corner play, obviously, him and Eze, when Eze had the shot across the goal, was a brilliant work player. I love the, by the way, new set piece coach, man. I, I don't know about you, D, but I'm noticing already. I'll get to that when I get to manager rating. Major improvements in, in the in the corners. We haven't scored yet. I get that part, but you can just see the creativity is there. Um, six recoveries for Wharton. Um, shooting can be better. I remember T mentioned yesterday, if he ever learns to shoot the ball with some accuracy, because he has a lot of chances, the ball drops him edge of the box. Take some yeah. wild shots, but his passing ability and his vision, you cannot listen. I coached for a long time. You can't coach it. It's just natural. You can yeah, see exactly. the guy. It's that there's a boy who played to Mateta when Felipe um when Felipe rolled him uh, at the at half at the halfway line and fouled him. Great ball by Wharton again, the pass to to, to Eze. Uh I mean for the for the one on one. The kid's just a phenomenal player. Again, I have a little I love a little issue with the fact he's not playing 90 minutes, but again, I'm gonna get past that, like I said, because there's got to be a reason for it. I'm not going to I'm not going to kill the manager over one thing that bothers me. Honestly, I'm not going to do that. But just in general, Walton's been very, very, very good. And I just see a link of him and Essay. It's working. And then the more he and Essay play together, the better they're going to be. And add at least to that mix, and then all of a sudden you've got a problem. So yeah, I, I, look, he's only 20 years old. He's only 20 years exactly. old. And I yeah. just he won't be here long. Said, he won't that be here part long, of his game part. where you can't really right. coach the the, can't. the part where he just knows how to he knows when to make the pass when, like his yeah. game IQ is just on point. Uh, that yeah. part is where it gets scary because he's got that in him. That's that's just natural. Now he's only 20 years old. You coach him, you you improve a few of uh, a few other elements of his game, let's say in front of goal or maybe defensively. Like he's gonna turn into an unreal player. Like I genuinely can't wait to see him live up to his full potential. And it's gonna take years for him to reach that level. So yeah, I'm I'm willing, I'm willing for us to like let, let me say this. We, I think we are I'm 95 percent sure we're going to make a nice little profit on him if we were to sell him already. And he's only played yeah, we're gonna make a massive profit on him. Exactly. exactly. Just, and he's only played a handful yeah. of games. Um, let's yeah. move on to Loma, which I thought once again brilliant in midfield, Patrick. Um, and it, it might not be appealing to the eye in terms of like a neutral watching palace to be like, oh, he's passing the brain or this is brilliant. But box to box, he does the job. And I, I thought once again it was fantastic yesterday. Um, you know, 89% passing accuracy, funny enough. Um, higher than best, Walton, on the, best on the I'm, team, best on the team, yeah, yeah, yeah. best on the team. 
And yeah. five clearances. This is what I think he gets eight for me. Defensive uh, work. Uh, one block shot. Uh, two interceptions. Two tackles. Um, yeah. Defensively brilliant. On the ball. Um, composed as well. Yeah. Very, very solid. You gave him, you gave out the stats again. The pass is getting better and better. Um, and he and Wharton have made a, a nice little tandem. So, you know, he j- just had a very solid game. I mean, there's no criticism of him yesterday. Again, overall, just very, very solid. And again, the ball... He played to SA, except the goal was very, very was really, really good. So hmm. let's move on to should we talk about SA first? Right, let's talk about SA. Yeah. Um, six and a half from you, which I think is a bit oh, well, then again, it's 0. 0.5 higher than me. Well, so, 0.5, don't do this. No. <laughs> me. It's just when you see this, it's bit. not the Henderson 4.5 simple. No, 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 no. everyone has their agendas, everyone has their agendas, yeah. as you say. Everyone has their agendas, right, exactly. They got when I see the sticks, when run. I see the sticks, it just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know what it is, it just doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> you got an assist yesterday, Patrick. When you look at these ratings, and if there's someone who didn't watch the game, they would have thought, oh, he had a pretty average game, but he got an assist, and it was a nice assist from Teta. But also, he missed a few big chances. There's people uh, I'm seeing that are frustrated with sometimes his lack of urgency, they say, in terms of, you know, slowing the game down and being, you know, just relaxed on a ball rather than taking the plays on. And sometimes he does switch it. It's a bit confusing with Eze. Like, he got an assist. He has some good moments. He has some bad moments. But I think what the word is, he was inconsistent throughout the game. And I think that was the most frustrating part of it because he could have actually finished the game off for us, as you said, and he didn't. Um, what do you, how, do, how do you sum up his game? You said it. You summed it up. It was frustrating. I mean, like I said, I mean, the pass to um, Mateta for the goal was very good. He could have taken the shot himself, could have been selfish. He didn't. He laid it on the plate for Mateta with a good finish. But my frustration with him yesterday was that it's not like he was playing Man City or Liverpool or Arsenal. It's Forest. Now, I know we never win at Forest the way I get that part, but he had three great chances. I would say really two. The one, the 37th minute, the one from Wharton, the 1v1. Have to think quick. Does he does he go with his right foot? Could he have chopped and gone to the left foot? I mean, it's a very quick decision and he doesn't score. It's the second half, again, that short corner with Wharton. When he flashes a, across the box, Munoz almost gets there. Was it a shot? Was it a cross? I don't know. And the 68th minute. He creates his own little chance there in the box with his thing all by him dribbling, dribbling across the box. He's like four or five players, gets a shot that sells saves. But for me, one of those, one of those three have to go in. If they go in at one nil or even at one, when we win the game, two, one or two nil. So that's my only frustration. I love Eze. I love it. But I'm gonna go back to what I said yesterday. I don't think he plays for a big six side and is a contributor. Can he play can he get in the squad for top six side? Of course he can. But he would never be a he'd never be a regular starter for one. So for me, he's better off either staying at Palace or going abroad because I just don't see him being making success at a big six club. Because for me, he just seems to just like this little oomph. Now I could be proven wrong, and I hope I am. I thought the same thing about Wolf. I love Wolf. I didn't think Wolf was a top six player, even though he went to United. Look what happened to United, he didn't play there. But just yesterday, I think he can add more, but I will give him a break in the fact that one, he's missing Olise, and we all know how much he plays better with Olise. But I see there's a Warren connection, there's a Mateta connection. You make a Mateta a better player. But for me, yesterday, he could have done more. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know what you think as well in the comment section down below um, about Ezra's yeah. performance. Were you happy? Do you think he could have done more? Or just let us know. Um, because it is a bit confusing talking about Eze. Like I was watching it him and I was thinking, how am I going to describe him? Because I'm not even <laughs> he's going to sit, but I'm not even that happy with his performance. And here we are talking about six and a half and sevens. Agendas yeah, agendas agendas keep going through in it. Um I'm I've seen six and a half for Eze, but I'm seeing seven and a half for Henderson. You know, it is what it is. Um for certain people. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan are you? You're funny. Jordan are you? No, I think yeah, we could both keep it short with are you six. I just, what did he do? Invisible. Um, Invisible. That, yeah, he didn't do much. Yesterday. How many touches did he actually have? He had 33 touches. 30, 32. I mean, 32 touches. I remember talking about Schlupp having like 15 touches a game, 40. So he, had, he right. wasn't that levels um, in the past. I've, I've seen that happen. But yeah, it, it was a quiet game from IU and he got some yeah. off. So yeah, it's keep as that. Mateta scored a goal. Let's move on from that. Um, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Flowers have to seven be and half, yes. so, seven and a half for Mateta. We both can agree on that. Um, and his shirt tucked in, corner flag booted. And yeah, um, he did say after the game about Glasner's system playing in it, he did say, Oh, it's very tiring because he's always asking me to run. 
But yeah, Patrick, you seems like his fitness is improving because I remember Mateta before he could not play in 90 minutes, and the last few games I've watched, he seemed like he's okay, like he can survive nine minutes, like he's got the energy. So I'm seeing fitness there, and fantastic finish by the way. Yes, nice pass from Lerma to uh, Eze to Mateta, but fantastic from Mateta, and he said he could even do better, so that's good. Which is amazing, yeah. Listen, man. Um, again, gotta give credit to Hodgson because you start with Hodgson and continue with 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 Glasner. He's just become to me, right now, player of the season. The first the improvement goes. The man has seven goals, uh, four assists in the league, three goals in the cup, ten goals on the season. I'm not going to lie, even as big a fan as I've been, I would have thought he would have gone to double digit goal before Edward did in the season. That's mad. Mm. But it's a testament to one. Him playing a lot of games, which is important. One, his 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 improvement, his work rate, his fitness levels, his ability to hold the ball up. Just in general, man, he just played so well. He got up four goals in the last seven games. I mean, listen, man, just really played well. And it's amazing because we don't even have another option. If he didn't play D, who's gonna play striker? Edward's injured. Know. We don't have. Oh, no. Yeah, we don't. Have Do you know what I mean? My, that's my point. And the fact that he's, that he's that he's producing under those circumstances that we don't even have a, a someone to push him is amazing. So, uh, solid game yesterday. Great season so far, and big up to JP Mateta. Well, he, he was linked with a move away from the club, so I I don't know what's going to happen with him in the summer. It was linked in January. Nothing happened, and I doubt the club or Glasner would want the same right now because it seems like. And I did say when Glasner joined that Mateta is going to be one of those players you look forward to seeing what happens under him and Glasner right. because you know we've, we've seen it with workhorse in the past with Glasner like yeah he, he does like them type of strikers and he has he has worked out so so far it's all good and as I said a lot of these players they will improve this is only this uh, only the start so that's going to be exciting especially for Mateta who is such a weird player to describe um since he's joined Palace but um <laughs> but yeah let's move on to the bench Schlup he came on yesterday I'll be honest when he came on I was like okay um yeah, that's it. I mean, we're not going to win this game. And um, he didn't have a bad game. Only had nine touches, Patrick, yeah. in 24 minutes, though. He, I, I thought it was fine. Like I said, he got in, he tried to get in the box. He was playing further up the pitch, obviously, IU's position. You know, he tried to create stuff. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. So, um, no worries. But um, I thought he, he was, I mean, he didn't do anything spectacular. I thought he was fine. I mean, and again, IU had a really uh, invisible game. So, I mean, Schlupp just tried to add a little bit more. That's it. So Yeah, and who's... There isn't really much to talk about with him. He came off of Walton. Uh, 12 touches in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, like, what do you say about Hughes? I don't, I don't even know. What, what do you, he, some people were upset um, that he came on again for Walton, but he's a player that you play for, like, between 10 to 20 minutes, whether you're trying to defend the lead or get a point or right. whatever. You just put him in there, and he's done a good job. He wasn't anything special or anything bad. And I give credit to Tim yesterday in the, in the post match show. He mentioned, listen, he didn't. We didn't lose a game. Normally, he's come on in a few other games. We've ended up losing games. We didn't lose a game. So he didn't give. We didn't give up a goal. He came on there. And I, have to, somebody mentioned yesterday in the post match, you put up on the screen that Yates was man marking Eze, which is why Eze may have not been as effective. I think the same thing for Hughes. Hughes came on. He was man marking Gibbs White. So I think that was the, that was the whole idea. Kind of get Gibbs White, who's been the most creative player for Wolves yesterday. So. You know what? He did a solid job yesterday. I don't like the sub of Wharton for Hughes. I'm getting sick of it, but but I'll say it again. We get to him now. I trust the manager. I do. So mm. I talk about trusting the manager. You gave him an eight. I give him a seven and a half. I'll be honest. There's nothing really wrong with the system yesterday, and I did see improvements. Nope. Uh, yeah. In sec, maybe the subs. The fu- then again, like who that's else the is one. That's, on? that's that's the that, only thing I'm going to say is the subs. No. Yeah, but then who else is he going to bring on? Like Remy no, Mappy, no, but that's Mappy, my that's my Mappy, point. Maybe I'm about Ozo. I don't right. know. I don't know what no, else he can I mean, really do. Yeah, I mean, like you just said, but uh, D, the setup was fine. The organization was very good. You could tell things are working as far as um, uh, over the two three weeks that we had off. But the thing is, again, we are limited in our options. We are so limited. Again, no Elise, no Rexaki, no France, no Edward, no. Uh, Decore, no Gahey, no Johnstone. What is he going to do? He's not going to play. And much as much I love Trilis B, Matherin, he's not going to put him in against Forest away. You know, much as I, I love Franco Umu, who's playing great for 21, he's not going to put him on. So you're right, it's either Ahamada or Ozo. And he chose with, he went with Schlupp and Hughes, the more experienced players. You, you, you can't kill him for that. You want to, and I get the frustration on the fan base, but 
it makes sense to go with the more experienced players when you want to hopefully get three points uh, worth to get a point. But I thought yesterday, listen, I thought everything you did yesterday was fine again, besides the Warren Hughes. But we've been going about that all season. It's probably going to keep going. Let's just, so for me, I'm going to try and move on from that because I'm not going to get caught up on, on one thing that gets me upset. It's, it, it, to me, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, well, Patrick's not going to do it and I'm not going to do it. And we're going to end it right there. Um, so if you have enjoyed the show, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let us know your player ratings if you haven't already done so in the conversation down below. Um, check out the match uh, reaction show. Uh, we speak about the game in a bit more detail there. And also, Bournemouth, Bournemouth's coming up. So there'll be the Bournemouth match preview that should be coming out probably in the evening of when this is posted as well. So check that all out. That's it from me and Patrick. And until next time, up the pad.